Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be installing free NAS on the Odyssey X86J4105 single board computer that I looked at a few videos back. As the name implies, free NAS is free software for creating your own network attached storage solution. And you can use it on any PC with a 64-bit processor and 8GB of RAM. So, let's go and get started. Right, here we have our Odyssey X86J4105, which is a 64-bit Celeron PC with 8GB of RAM. And as you can see, I've mounted it on a piece of a 2mm plastic card. If you can just turn it over there, you see with some screws coming through the back. And they uh, mount the board on these uh, standoffs. These are 20mm uh, M3 standoffs. And uh, as you can see, I've not just got the board mounted on here. I've also got this a hard drive. This is a 750 gigabyte, two and a half inch Western Digital Black hard drive. Now, talking of storage, it's important to note that FreeNAS requires a PC with at least two drives. And the first of these is used as the boot drive on which FreeNAS itself is installed and needs to be at least eight gigabytes in size. And the other drive or drives are then used to store user files and can be any size you like. Now, some models of this uh, Odyssey X86J4105 come with 64 gigabytes of a EMMC flash storage on the board. In fact, it's here on this particular board. But uh, here I've actually disabled the onboard flash in the BIOS, and so the boot drive is going to be uh, this Western Digital Black uh, SSD, which is a 250 gigabyte drive, which is a bit of an overkill for installing FreeNAS on, but it's what I've got available right now. And if you like, you can even use an 8 gigabyte USB 3 flash drive as your FreeNAS boot drive. On this system, as you probably guessed, our storage drive will be the hard drive here, the 750 gigabyte Western Digital Black, which is connected to the SATA port and the SATA PowerPoint on the Odyssey board. And then finally, to set things up, we're also going to need a USB drive, which will be used as our installation media. Right, I've now plugged the flash drive into my laptop where I'm visiting the FreeNAS website at freenas.org. And as you can see, we can just click on uh, download. And uh, here it'll ask us to sign up for a newsletter, I think. There we are, it's asking us to sign up for a newsletter. But we can skip that if we wish, go all the way down and just go to the, the download page. And then when that comes up, there we are, we can click on download and download the FreeNAS ISO file. With the download complete, we now need to write the image to our USB drive. And for this, I'm going to use Belena Etcher, which you can obtain from belena.io forward slash etcher. And so if we select our ISO image, there it is. And we check we're going to write it to the right place, which is our USB drive. I always check that. That's right. We can now create our installation media. And there we are, that's finished. And we can now cancel there. Whatever you do, don't reformat that drive. And we can now close down Etcher, go to this PC and eject our USB drive. For my next trick, we're returning to the Odyssey where I plugged in the USB drive along with power and ethernet. I've also connected a monitor and a keyboard, although these are only required for the installation process. So, if we now turn on this lovely piece of hardware, I'm going to press F7 to access the boot menu. Here, what we want is USB disk, which contains our FreeNAS installer. So, uh, let's uh, select that. And there we go, things are happening. And we can now boot the FreeNAS installer, option one. Next, it's option one again for install upgrade. And we now have to select the drive where FreeNAS should be installed. And we can see here two drives. The top one here is our hard drive, the 750 gigabyte hard drive. And the second drive down is the one we actually want, which is the NVMe SSD, a 250 gigabyte drive. So I'll press the space bar to select that and enter. And it will tell us it'll be deleted. That's fine. We can press enter again. We now have to enter a root password, which we'll use to access FreeNAS over a network. So I'll put that in. 
just a nice short test password there, that'll do fine. And we'll tap down to OK and Enter. And it'll now say, do we want to boot via UEFI or BIOS? I'm going to select UEFI here. And if you want to know more about UEFI and BIOS, you can watch my relevant video. Finally here it's saying, do we want to create a swap file on the boot device? I guess that's because it's a fairly large boot device. We'll say, yes, we'll create a swap file and uh, Enter. And uh, here we go, lots more exciting console activity as it installs FreeNAS. And uh, there we are, the FreeNAS installation has succeeded. So I'll press a key and uh, we now need to reboot the system. And uh, it's now coming back again and I'm pressing down the escape key to go into the BIOS, which uh, we've arrived in. And the reason for that is we want to make sure our boot order is correct and uh, the boot option one wants to be here, not Windows Boot Manager. We need it to be the uh, UEFI iOS there. That's the 250 gigabyte drive. We'll have that there and uh, that should be okay. So if we now save and exit F4, we should be able to reboot once more. And this looks very encouraging. It looks like it's booting free NAS and it should always do that now unless we alter the BIOS otherwise and uh, all the lovely console stuff is going on again. And of course, this is the first boot, so it might take a reasonable amount of time, so we'll speed on through. And uh, there we are, after that long and exciting process, everything is clearly working okay, and FreeNAS is telling us its local IP address on our network, which is 192.168.1.4. So, what we now need to do is to go to another computer on the same network and to enter that local IP address into a web browser. So let's have a go. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? Looks like it's working. And we need to enter our uh, username, which is going to be root, and our password, which is going to be the password we created, and uh, log in. And uh, there we are. We're into the, the FreeNAS web interface. Everything seems to have worked. You can see our computer, there it is, the J4105. So clearly we've uh, had a successful install of FreeNAS. Guess what? Here I am back again, and I've now got the Odyssey running headlessly with just power and ethernet connected. So let's return to the FreeNAS web interface and uh, here we are, and we'll press F11 to have a bit more space on the screen. And here there is all sorts of functionality available via this menu on the left. There's all sorts of things you can do here and set up lots and lots and lots and lots of menu options and things. And we've no hope of going through all of this in the remainder of this video. So what I'm going to do is to very quickly gain access to the hard drive connected to the Odyssey via a Windows share. Now, before a drive can be used to store and share data, it needs to be part of what's called a pool. So we'll go across to storage and drop down there and go to pools. And of course, there's no pools here at the moment because this is a new blank system. And we'll click on add and we'll click on create pool. And uh, I now I think need to uh, just reduce our scaling a bit so we can get everything on screen properly. And uh, we'll give a name to our pool, which I think we'll call a EC underscore pool like that. And it's probably worth saying at this stage that FreeNAS uses the ZFS file system in which drives are grouped into virtual devices or VDEVs. You can see it says a VDEVs over there. And often in FreeNAS, there are going to be multiple physical drives inside a VDEV to give you redundancy using what's called RAID Z or RAID Z. But uh, here we've only got one physical drive, so obviously there'll only be one inside our VDEV, so we'll click on it there, which is a ADA0, that is the, uh, the hard drive on the system. Click the little arrow, it'll go across into the VDEV, and we can now click on Create. And of course it wants us to confirm this will delete everything on the drive, which it will, so we'll do that and Create Pull. Next, I'm going to go to uh, Accounts over there, and I'll maybe try and make things a bit bigger again on the screen, at least for a second, and we'll go to uh, Users and I'm going to add in a user. And as you can probably see here, I'm sure you can see here, there's already lots of users already created for various purposes. We're going to add a new one, so we'll click on Add User, and we'll call the user Explaining Computers, and we'll give it a username, say, uh, not as long as that. We'll call it EC will do, won't it? That'll be fine for uh, that. 
and we'll set a password up, nice simple test password, and we'll do the same again down there. There we are, those now match. And if we scroll down here a little bit, we can set the uh, home directory here to uh, EC pool. That will do, we'll put it in there, and it'll create a home directory for us off that. So uh, that should be okay for now. And we'll just click on save, and we've created a very basic user. Now we're gonna go down here to sharing and uh, open it up, there we are. And we'll go to a uh, Windows Shares SMB, which is a normal way of sharing to a Windows machine. And we'll click on add to create a Windows share. And uh, once again, we'll actually uh, try and find out where it needs to be. This is gonna be EC pool. And you'll see EC is now created as a folder there. It did that for us when we created the user. And uh, we can now uh, click on uh, save. It'll now say, do we want to enable the service for SMB sharing, which obviously we do if we want it to work. So we'll click on uh, enable service there. And it'll tell us it's been enabled, which is rather nice of it. And it now says, do we want to set up the permissions, which of course we do, or it's not going to work. And uh, here we're going to uh, add an ACL, an access control list item like that, which will go all the way down the bottom of here. Do you remember someone once said that networking was the last black art of computing? And it certainly is. And uh, here we're going to set who to a uh, user. And the user is going to be, uh, if I can just get to the drop down there, it's going to be, whoa, there we are, where's it gone? There we are, the user is going to be EC. And uh, finally down here, I'm going to apply permissions recursively so we can access everything inside that uh, particular folder. There we are. And having done that, we'll click on save. And uh, now in theory, we have set up a share on the hard drive connected to free NAS. So if we flip back through on this machine to uh, this PC and we go to a uh, network, oh, there we are, free NAS has appeared. That's rather good, isn't it? And if we click on the free NAS like that, it'll uh, open up. And of course it wants to know a username. We'll put in uh, EC, let's bring you over here in case you're watching on a television, you want to see the edge of the screen. Uh, we'll put in our password, nice simple password. Can you guess what that was? And we'll click on okay. There we are, oh, we can see EC, and I think I'm going to go for a map a network drive like that. Z will do, and uh, there we are. We've actually got Z on the FreeNAS, which actually works, which is which is rather good. And we'll just prove it's working. We'll do a new, say, uh, text document down there. If in doubt, create a text document called hello, and uh, we'll uh, open up that text document. We'll put some text in hello again and file and save. This is obviously proving that everything is actually working okay, which it is. Yes, that's okay. And if we look back to uh, this PC, you can see, yes, we've got a free NAS is sitting there, EC, we've created it as a, as a drive, and all of this lovely network storage is now available. As we've seen in this video, free NAS runs very nicely on the Odyssey x86j4105. But there is one final thing I need to tell you, and that is that FreeNAS is published by a company called iX Systems, who also sell a commercial NAS product called TrueNAS. And in the third quarter of 2020, FreeNAS and TrueNAS are going to merge into a single brand, which is going to be TrueNAS. But do not fear, there'll still be a free product available, but FreeNAS will become TrueNAS core. So if you're watching this video in sort of July, August 2020 or beyond, just note that FreeNAS is now TrueNAS Core. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, press that subscribe like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.